In this short video, we want to give you some tips about handle, how to handle a newborn foal. Uh, some things that you really need to be kind of careful about and pay attention to, and so hopefully we give you some insight of how to handle one when they're just a few days old. Now, the baby we're going to show you on this little video, she's only about three days old. And yes, if you look at the stall that we have her in, um, right now it is bedded with shavings. It really is preferable when you do have these mares in to foal, if you do foal them inside, to have that bed, that, the stall bedded with, with straw. Straw is going to be a lot cleaner and a lot better for those, for those mares as they're going through the foaling process. And so that's kind of how we want to have the stalls bedded. So in this little short video, we're going to show you some things about handling the baby, um, getting the baby and the mare out of the stall the first time, and hopefully just give you some safe ways to work with the both of them. Now when you first go to handle these newborn foals, you have to understand and realize that they're not halter broke, and so you need to, to be sensible and do some safe things about handling them. I will say that this baby is extremely quiet, extremely easy to work with, and don't think they're all going to be as, as easy to get along with as what she is. But you can see what we're going to do is go ahead and put one hand and cradle them in front of their neck, and then the other hand we're going to go back by their buttocks and usually go ahead and take a hold of their tail. And with that you can do a lot to move them where you need. Um, also, it's really good in the early training programs of these young guys to get in here and handle them and work with them as, easy, as early as you can to get them used to being handled and rubbed on and things like that. You might also hear of a process or another theory that people will do called um, imprint training, and that's something that you can look and research more about. This is not really truly imprint training because that's normally done within the first 24 hours. But here we're just, um, after this baby's about just a few days old, getting in here and rubbing on them and holding on them. Um, if, he need, if we need to do any treatments on this foal at this stage, it's too young to put a halter on and so he's gonna hold the baby and um, cradle her and move around her and then we could give her a vaccination um, to give her an injection, draw blood on her and any of those types of things as we might need. All right, some more things about handling these babies. Really pay attention to them. The other thing is they're not going to be overly receptive to this. So what you have to remember is just kind of hang on to them. Just kind of go with them and see she's showing a little bit of resistance here. You want, this is some of your very first early training on these guys, and so you want to make sure that you do go ahead and hold on to them. Um, pull them to you, keep them um, around you, and so that you from the very beginning are the boss. You don't want to get in a super big battle or overly aggressive with them. You certainly don't want to injure them and keep it all positive. And so we'll make sure that that baby's doing what we want her to do and then back off um, and be friendly to them. The other thing is they like that they like you to be about eye level or on the same size with you. So what you'll see is he's going to creep down so he's not as imposing, so he's more about the same size of that baby. The other areas that a foal really likes to be scratched is they're up at their withers and then also at their tail head. And if you watch even adult horses out, they will scratch each other at their tail head and up at their withers. Um, and those are really comfort zones and areas of, of really um, positive kind of interaction with them. It's good to go ahead and pet this baby on her face, on her head, on her ears, but really that initial contact, if you, if you bend down and go in and approach him at their shoulder, you're going to get them, and you can see that she's kind of interested in him and looking at him, and you can even back away, and so many times they'll go ahead and follow and come to you. The other thing you want to be careful as you're handling them is watch your feet because they will kick out, they will step on you. So make sure that you've got closed shoes, preferably boots on, when you go to handling these young guys so you don't get yourself hurt um, and you can stay with them and work with them and handle them in the right way. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and put a halter on this little bit, this little um, filly. Now remember, I did say she is extremely quiet. They're not all going to be take things quite as well as what she has here. And she has had one on um, once or twice already. And so just kind of work with them. Just be pretty um, careful with them and pay attention. They're not all going to stand there quite as nicely as what this filly did. And sometimes you just need to put them on and let them shake their head and play with it and get used to just having that halter on. It's really nice if you have the time and the facility to go ahead and start putting a halter on them when they're this little. If you wait till they're six, eight months of age, you can tell that they're going to be a lot bigger and a lot dif more difficult to handle. Um, 
we're not, you don't want to ramrod them. You want to just more or less kind of pull them to you and push them ahead and get them to move and give to pressure of that halter, but do it in a very kind of subtle and quiet way so that baby does learn to, he's not really going to snap her around. He's just going to hold her head over here and get her convinced to go ahead and come over to him like she just did right there. So if we take this baby and we would just pull hard on her head, okay, that's when oftentimes that they'll go ahead and get in the fight with you. They might flip over. Um, I've even known in babies at this stage, if you flip them over, you can break a neck, and so which is never good. And so instead of getting a fight with her and really doing a really push type thing, he's more or less gonna move her hip over and pull her so she does come around and send her more forward and pull her around into the circle around him so it's always a give and take type of thing and you move him off center just a little bit, but here he's gonna push on her hip, send her forward, and then around so she does come to him. Remember, you wanna do it both directions, so he first did it to the left, and now um, he's gonna ask her to come. He's gonna push on her hip and send her forward a little bit, and then come around to him, all right? And remember, she's only about three days old, and if you, have like I said before, have the time and abilities to go ahead and do some of this when they're very young like this, that really is to your advantage because they're smaller, they're a little bit easier to handle than when they're six or eight months of age. Now you need to think about um, some of your safety and a little, bit of the you know, a little bit of the behavior and nature of these newborn foals when you first take them out of the stall. Ideal is that we have the, the foal that's going to follow that mare. You have to realize here within probably about the first week of that foal's life, their eyesight is not 100%. So don't assume they're going to magically just walk out of the stall and follow that mare very simply because they've not been outside. If you by chance have a mare that foals out on pasture, that's a little bit different situation because they're already going to be out there in the open together. But when you're foaling in a stall situation, you need to probably have two people with you when you initially take that mare and foal out of the stall to make sure they come out correctly. Some things to think about too is because that baby can't really see, he doesn't really know what's going on. If the mare and foal do get separated, um, the baby's gonna panic. Sometimes they run off because they can't see. So sometimes what the handler can do is go ahead and do that little, the whinnying that you might hear us do when that, when, um, and because the foal can hear, he's just not gonna see very well. So that's a little bit of a comforting thing to those foals and it also does help them know where that mare actually is. And he's going to cradle her and bring her right along the mare um, as we go out to the indoor arena. Um, it's nice if you have a small enclosure like what we have here so we can initially put that mare and foal out together by themselves so then the foal can go ahead and learn how to follow that mare in a small area. So after we've had this baby and mare, well, the, the baby will follow, its, uh, follow the mare, and we've had the halter on a little bit here in the stall, so she's kind of giving to pressure and, and working with us a little bit, and also knowing the demeanor of the baby, like this one that she's so quiet, we'll go ahead and start leading them to the pasture, leading them as we turn them out for a couple of days to get some of that initial halter breaking done. Uh, what you will find is if you can get a halter on one, it's very handy. Some of these guys get pretty independent pretty fast and they don't follow the mare as well or they kind of get distracted and run off a little bit and that's always a very nervous situation both for the baby and for the mare. And so by having two people and having, and actually as they get a little bit more broke, you can even have one person um, holding the mare and holding the baby and moving them from the, from the, um, from the stall to wherever you might be going to turn them out. But remember, they're not really completely halter broken, so you have to be careful with them. It's always a kind of a give and take type thing. Um, they're easily hurt and injured if you kind of get a little bit too aggressive with them, and so always pay attention and be careful and, and, and think about some of those types of things. You'll notice that this baby does have a nylon halter on, and here as we're gonna have it out just for a little bit, we might leave the nylon halter on. However, it's not really recommended that you leave a nylon type halter when you turn these horses out. Uh, what you're going to find is they do not break, and so if it would get hung on something or whatever, the outcome probably is not going to be very positive. There are some operations, some large farms that do put halters on their babies right away and leave them on, but if you really watch and notice, those are going to be leather halters because a leather halter, halter will break if they get hung on a fence or something. Um, the halter is going to break and hopefully the baby won't, won't break itself. And so that's something to be aware of. And just because we have a nylon one on this one right now as we're kind of getting it started and taking it out is not what we would leave on this baby, say, if we went to, to leave it turned out for any amount of time. 
So we're going to go ahead and take this pair out now that we've got had the halter on the baby a little bit. He's going to go ahead and work with her so she does follow the mare but kind of learns to respect the halter um, and, and put the two together. So he's going to kind of just work with the baby and she's got a natural go mechanism because she's wanting to follow the mare and he'll push her at her hip a little bit um, and work with her. Again, knowing that she's not completely halter broke. So he's just going to be a give and take and kind of work with her, getting her to follow the mare, kind of learn some of the halter pressure and those types of things as we put the two together. I'll remind you, it is much easier to do this when that they're at this age and this size than when they're four or five, six months of age. And once we've done this at this early stage, it's going to be there with that foal. And so you might not even have a halter and lead it for another month or so, but it's going to be there. And so the next time you do um, halter them and try to lead them, it's going to go much easier than if it would be the very first time. So what we've shown you are some different things as far as handling this baby when it's relatively new, just a few days old, and also a little bit about putting a halter on them early, early on, and then getting the, them to lead behind the mare. So what you can also see is once we've had them out in a smaller enclosure, then put them out in a little bit bigger area, you can see that that mare and foal pretty much follow each other around, and they've pretty much done the good bonding thing that you want them to have, and the foal's going to be bonded to the mare and follow the mare around. So now after a day or two of this, then we're perfectly fine to go ahead and turn them out into a much bigger enclosure, a bigger pasture, even if there's other mares and foals around because these two have bonded together.